King Misuzulu Gazuelitini's kingship has been marred with controversy and contestation from the moment he was announced as the heir to the Zulu royal throne. Good evening and welcome to Unfiltered. I'm Sizwe Mbofu Walsh. His brother, Prince Simagade Gazuelitini, applied to overturn President Cyril Ramaphosa's certification of King Misuzulu. This week, the High Court of South Africa, Gauteng Division, set aside the recognition of the Amazulu King, King Misuzulu Gazuelitini. Tonight we ask, what is the future of the Zulu King? For this conversation, we are joined by Prince Africa Zulu, King Misuzulu's spokesperson, Prince Togozani Zulu, representing Prince Simagade Gazuelitini, and Attorney Barnabas Kulu. Let's go to a, a package for context and then we'll come back to our conversation and discussion. You have picked up the mighty spear that has fallen. May your steady hand guide and bring stability to the kingship of Amazon. I have no doubt that with the support of the royal family, you will lead the process to unite the community and all Abantuana Basendungu. Under your wise leadership, may the kingdom reach new heights of development, progress, and peace. Prince Togozani, thank you very much for joining us. Can I start by asking for your reaction to the judgment of Judge Davis and what you think it means? Uh, good evening, uh, uh, Sizwe, and to your viewers at home. Um, uh, uh, His Majesty the King uh, Simagate Gazulitini's reaction uh, to the judgment, uh, firstly, is that plainly, uh, uh, Prince Mesozulu's recognition has been set aside. Secondly, it vindicates what uh, the Zulu royal family has always said, that both the process of identification and recognition were, re were ri riddled uh, with uh, irredeemable irregularities. Prince... Africa, thank you very much for joining us and we really appreciate both of you taking this platform as we did in the previous episode to exchange views. Um, can I ask for, for your reaction to the judgment and what you believe it, it signifies? Uh, thank you, Bob Sizwe. Professor the the judgment uh, was really based what was more targeting I mean the, I mean focused on the president uh, there is nothing about the judgment they talked about sitting aside of the decision of judge Madonna which was also uh, the decision a decision that was also protected and emphasized by the uh, Supreme Court uh, during the time when President Bonisi went to challenge the very same uh, situation. So, yes, uh, it was unexpected that uh, the judge uh, will take uh, this route to say that he's not satisfied, maybe with the processes, or he wants the processes to be sort of uh, verified. So we are yet to see uh, how the appeal of the president, because the president has decided to appeal his decision, because this decision is basically is a decision that is focused, that is targeting the president on this issue, his role on the issue. Mr. Kulu, could I bring you in and ask for your reaction to the judgment? Yes, thank you very much, Sizwe. Uh, good evening to the listeners and good evening to Abonda Bezi. Um, thank you for having us uh, or giving us an opportunity to comment uh, on this uh, topical issue. Um, 
we represent the royal family uh, who have actually challenged the decision of the president to recognize uh, the former uh, King Musuzulu. Our claim was purely based on the fact that the processes which were required to be followed, observing the Zulu customs and allowing the eligible members of the Zulu family to have a say in the identification was flawed from the beginning. What this judgment has done is that it has vindicated the members of the Zulu family when it has declared invalid the recognition of King Misuzulu as the king of the Zulus. So it is a vindication. Uh, Prince Mbonisi, who has been leading in this litigation, was actually accompanied by more than 20 princes and princesses from the Zulu family. And uh, those are clients that today, or on the day when the judgment was delivered, who were vindicated. And what it says, which is very unfortunate, is that right now we do not have a king of the Zulu nation because of this judgment. And secondly, right, right. Can can I can I just explore? Mm -hmm. Can I just explore that that with Prince Togozani as well? Because what you've said there already is is, is a very fascinating and interesting um, perspective on the implications of the judgment. There is this question now of before an appeal, where we actually stand with with the recognition of the the Zulu king. Uh, what's your understanding of? whether we actually have a king at the moment before an appeal is formally lodged, not just announced? Yes, no, I, I agree with uh, Usongope. As uh, I indicated that uh, Injula Meti's recognition, Prince Mesuzulu, uh, was uh, 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 set aside, which effectively means that he is no longer the Zulu king. However, I would like to, to reflect on what uh, Prince uh, Africa has said uh, relating to the judgment focusing uh, on on the president on the sure, president. Sure. And I now think, of course, I will bring Prince yes, Africa in after. Yes, after I, that. I think uh, that is neither here or there, because whilst the judgment may have focused uh, on how the president exercised his constitutional powers, but the effect of the judgment is that Prince Mesuzulu is no longer a king. I also had a, a, a Prince Africa making reference to the judgment uh, uh, of, of, of uh, 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 Madondo, maybe also to, print, to bring uh, 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 Prince Africa's attention to paragraph 61 of the judgment, where uh, 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 the judge, Norman Davis, specifically deals with the question of the finality of, uh, of uh, 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 Judge Madondo's uh, uh, decision to the effect that that decision did not uh, bind the president to the effect that that decision does not bind any other committee that may be uh, constituted. In fact, in this instance, we are looking at uh, uh, the investigative committee in terms of section uh, 8, subsection 4A. And further, um, uh, uh, Judge Davis uh, stated that in the event of new evidence being uh, uh, furnished, uh, adduced before uh, the committee, it's likely that the committee may arrive at a decision that is different to the decision that uh, was taken uh, in terms of the court order of, of judgment. And he goes on to say that the question of the meeting of uh, the 14th of May 2021 is rendered uh, uh, moot by, by, by that judgment. Uh, Prince Africa, how do you interpret the judgment uh, and, and respond to the idea that until a, a formal appeal is lodged also by uh, King Misuzulu, um, then at the moment the, the position is that the recognition has been set aside? 
Uh, <clears throat> Bambof, mm. uh, I want to assure the Zulu nation and the rest of South Africa that we have a, a king, a Zulu king on the throne. His Majesty is the ruling Zulu king on the throne. Uh, the, techni the technicalities, I want to take you back to the certification process. If you remember very well, when His Majesty King Mrs. Zulu entered the stadium, he entered as a Zulu king. He was already a Zulu king because he had passed and participated to all the processes, the customary processes that expected that he was expected to partake on. So, <clears throat> the, I, 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 I don't, I don't expect anything less from our uh, 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 brothers, the prince and the, the also Ubabuku. Uh, Obviously, they are in the business of uh, rendering the king invalid. And that's exactly what they are saying, and that's exactly what they're here to do. But just to uh, make sure that uh, people uh, are not misled, His Majesty King Mrs. Zulu is the Zulu king. He was not put in the throne by the certif certificate of the president. That came at the end. His Majesty became the candidate, and he got identified from birth when his mother, Queen Mantombi, who is the daughter of the great king Sokoza of Swaziland, he decided, she decided to come and uh, marry King Zulitim. And he, King Misuzulu, when he was a prince, he was a prince, then before he took over the throne, he was the eldest and he born from uh, Queen Mantombi. So uh, we've been through this and I will say it again, that there should not be any panic and we don't depend on technicalities and looking for gaps so that we are saying the king is not the king for that three minutes while he's waiting for, for the president to appeal. There's no king that is a, actually must wait for the president to appeal the king. When you're born a king, we are born a king. So we cannot go around and look for opportunity to uh, render the king invalid. So the king's role is real. The king is still a Zulu king. And today he's been up and down a... Uh, doing what he does best to serve his uh, people and his subject, and he's been participating on water project. So uh, as much as we welcome all these uh, debates and input, but uh, I don't want uh, to, you to get confused that the king was not put on the throne by the certificate of the president. It came last, he was put there by his right of bed being the, the, uh, uh, the, the one of the great wife, coming from the great wife. Thank you. Can I, can I just ask you in terms of factually, um, Prince Africa as well, does, does King Misuzulu intend to appeal the judgment himself or is that still being decided or will he just allow the president to appeal and, and, and allow the processes to go from there? The judgment is a aim, I mean, it's targeting the president. So the president uh, has expressed that he's going to be uh, appealing. Um, so that is where we are at the moment. The sure. president will be appealing the decision, which the judgment, you know, uh, was at, uh, to to the president's attention. It was not to the king's attention. The king is the second respondent on the issue. Right, right, uh, Mr. Ulu, could I come to you on this on this distinction between the the recognition of the king by the president and the procedures followed in that recognition? versus the customary process of identifying the king. Uh, some observers of the judgment have said that, and of course I'll also ask for Prince Togozani's view on this, Judge Davis really looked at the procedural aspects of President Ramaphosa's decision to recognize the king and at least at best left open the question of whether the identification process was legitimate. Do you think that's a, a, a fair reading of the judgment? Look, he, he did not um, leave uh, this not under attack. Because if you look at it, uh, we are living in a country that is ruled by the rule of law. This procedure, which is supported obviously by the legislation of recognition, is intertwined the customary or the observing of the cults of the and rituals 
by the royal family. Apologies, so apologies, Mr. Paul. We're, we're just struggling it's, with your connection. We're going to make sure that we we fix that and, and we'll come back to you. But we just want to make sure that we get a, a clean audio. Uh, but Prince Togazani, yes. maybe this is an opportune time for you to, yes. to give your interpretation of the judgment. Yes, I, I, I agree uh, with Usongope, uh, Utonda, uh, 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 absolutely, that the process of identification by the family and the recognition by the presidents are two legs of one process. Hence, he, he, he refers to the, the process as being intertwined because a person would first be identified in terms of customary law and customs and the identifying body being the royal family, that particular royal family, then approaches uh, the president for the recognition. Now, uh, it's not correct to suggest that uh, 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 the setting aside of the, the, the recognition by the, by, the, by the president in any way uh, 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 does not temper with the identification by the family. On, on the second leg, or the second part uh, of your question, uh, that one of saying, Possibly, it leaves uh, the issue of the identification open. It doesn't. If we could uh, uh, revisit uh, paragraph 61 of the judgment, the uh, 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 judge Norman Davis there states categorically that the matter has to be subjected uh, to the investigative uh, committee. Right. right. Uh, let, let's go to a break, uh, Prince Togozani, and when we come back, we'll also ask our guests for their reaction to whether President Ramaphosa's decision and the procedures he followed in recognizing the Amazulu King were appropriate and where to from here. Stick with us for this fascinating conversation on Amazulu royal kingship. Welcome back to Unfiltered. We're discussing the Amazulu Royal House in light of a recent judgment which reviewed and set aside President Cyril Ramaphosa's decision to recognize Amazulu King Misuzulu. Uh, Prince Africa, could I come to you uh, in terms of the actions of the president? Um, do you believe that, that the, the course and the procedures he followed in in recognizing the king when he did were rational and and do you stand by the the decision of the president and the timing which which he used absolutely there's no doubt about it the president uh, did every uh, thing in his power to follow all the processes in this uh, uh, process is that the, the issue here is that uh, we have a situation where uh, people are just uh, 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 all wanting to uh, take over and become kings. And uh, at, this, at, at that time, you remember that uh, uh, Prince Mbonisi was in one pool with Prince Togozani. They were all in one camp. Now, to show that this has become a business, so Prince Mbonisi has gone to open his own franchise. He went to Nongoma and uh, looked for Prince Buza and found Prince Buza. He dress him up, he put him on the thing to say they come and contest. Now, it, while that is happening, the Zulus are not really happy uh, with the instability being created unnecessarily. We must be very thankful and grateful that we've got a president who is not even Zulu, who has decided to stick to the truth. The processes were followed. I know that the judge was not present when the, pre when the president was engaging in these processes. But we cannot now say that just because they, this judgment that is creating doubt, obviously there's curiosity on the judgment from the judge that he maybe he feels that the procedure might have not been followed. But the truth is we've got all faith in the president and we know that he did everything in his power to follow all the processes. There was even a, a Wilson Kunu mediation thing that uh, came along in Brazil, where, where there were <clears throat> engagement, you know, 
and it was up and down, up and down with uh, the state petrol uh, consulting, uh, talking to people about the same issue. Is that the issue, uh, people have got different candidates, people got different preference. You will never be able to stop that. But uh, there is only one king, his majesty. Because even, even if, if, if they're even saying that king is, uh, I mean, pre, uh, Prince Marathi is the king, and then they are saying uh, there's a judgment that is not recognizing King Susan. How they are even calling their their side of the uh, I mean uh, their, their side uh, of the leadership, you know, uh, referring to him as a king? If they feel like these uh, certification processes are the one that makes a king, these processes don't make a king. A king is born, and that's exactly what has happened to His Majesty. And um, the, the, the certification of the president came last which is why the president is very confident that he's going to challenge this issue and put it to rest. And we welcome that the people must challenge the king. This is how it works. This is how the Zulu, uh, the Zulu throne has been for years and years. And over time, all this will be history. People will be, will be playing with their kids at home. Prince Togozani, what, what is your view? Of course, feel free to respond to anything yes. that Prince Africa has said. But uh, also, what is your view of... of the president's decision to to appeal the judgment first of all and and do you believe that he followed all processes in the recognition decision uh, that that has been set aside by the court yes uh, firstly uh, in terms of the court order he did not in fact when we had our first interview before the court order uh, uh, on behalf of yeah. uh, our de facto king uh, I categorically stated that the president had not followed. Uh, 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 the, uh, in fact, I said he bungled the process when, in fact, it's mandatory in terms of Section 4 that he constitutes an investigative committee, but instead he went for a, a, a mediation panel. Also, when he had to take a, 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 a decision in terms of powers vested in him in terms of both the Constitution and, and, and the relevant uh, act, he decided not to apply his mind. Firstly, ignoring uh, evidence before him in terms of the, the report of the panel, but also not applying his mind in terms of deciding on, on the matter. Firstly, uh, 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 adopting uh, uh, the decision uh, of my Dondo, which in fact, in terms of paragraph 61 has been dealt with, but also uh, stating that he relied uh, on advice by uh, 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 Principal Telezi. May his uh, soul rest in peace. Also, well, I, I will not speak to speak for Prince Mbonesi. We are saying Uzonda Makwala, Usimagate, Gazweltini, is a de facto king, our de facto king, because he followed or he, 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 his identification was dealt with in terms of the customary processes, following all the procedures up to ushering uh, 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 His Majesty uh, at Enyogeni uh, uh, Royal Crawl. Uh, Prince Africa knows uh, what uh, does uh, that crawl signify in terms of the royal family and, 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 and Zulu culture, but also um, Oh, when I went over, Nya Kalela, when I went and there's Uganda, but now I'm a Kalela and I'm going to because you know it's very uh, dangerous, Makeba, to align yourself and I'm going to with the decision of the president to appeal uh, 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 um, uh, against the decision of, 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 of uh, Judge Norman Davis because. In practical terms, what that does uh, uh, is that the president has now installed himself as the new pain uh, of the Zulu royal family, as the new instigator uh, that causes disunity in the Zulu royal family because we thought that this process would allow the Zulu royal family to deal with its matters uh, you know, without any form of interference. However, we understand why the president has, uh, has uh, 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 lodged an appeal. There are allegations uh, circulating, Sizwe, that just before the pre president uh, 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 decided 
on the issue of the appeal, there was a meeting with a, 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 a Prince a, a Misuzulu in Julameti to say that if I appeal, firstly, those are the allegations. Firstly, you have to, 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 to uh, uh, unconstitute uh, the Ngonyama Trust uh, Board for me to, to, to identify new members. Secondly, uh, you have uh, to, 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 to give uh, Shanduka uh, 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 rights to deal with uh, uh, timber plantations under Gwamkwanazi uh, 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 clan, uh, Andile Ramaphosa, whom, by the way, we know there was a, a VN that was uh, leaked in terms where of Andile uh, 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 assured uh, uh, Prince Musuzulu that he would intercede on his behalf. Uh, with the president to make him king. But fourthly, that uh, Prince Misuzulu has to retract his statement uh, uh, to the effect that the IFP has to, uh, has to win election. But generally, we view uh, the conduct uh, uh, of uh, the president as, being in, as causing or deepening disunity right. in the royal family, the Zulu nation, with rippling effects on the cohesiveness of the South African nation. Let, let, let me allow Prince Africa to respond to, to those allegations as well. And obviously, just to say, the president and Andile Ramaphosa aren't here, but I'm sure that they would, they, they have a they would, interest, they would a, dispute. A business interest. Sure, but I'm sure they would time dispute that. Time will tell. Um, Prince Africa, uh, how, do you, how do you respond to the suggestion that there was a meeting where, where uh, different interests were exchanged? And, and the idea that it's, it's unwise to align yourself with the appeal. It's, it's very sad that uh, we have moved from a conversation of uh, uh, the Crown uh, to now allegations to things that really never took place. I can assure you that none of the things that His Royal Highness uh, is mentioning about the King meeting the President. You know, the King has not met the President at the in a very long time. There was a meeting that was supposed to almost took place when the, the president, then he had decided to go to Egypt. That was a long time ago. So it doesn't surprise us that uh, there are so many of these stories that uh, everybody keep building around about the king. People are fantasizing and creating stories about the king going to meet the president. And I don't know, maybe it's a sign of good luck that the king is gonna be meeting the president soon. Yeah, but as far as I know, that none of those, you know, and um, there's nothing wrong with aligning with the truth. I am aligning with the truth because King Mr. Zulu is a, is a symbol of life. He rules a, a nation, a real nation, a practical nation. So we all aligned to that uh, destiny, and it is with pride that we have to serve His Majesty. Whilst we take into consideration that they may not, they may share different views, because like I've told you that the other side is already two divisions, and there is other more divisions. There's actually three more, three more, five people more out there who also want to be king. So if ever really we have to entertain that side, we will never be able to get anywhere. So all those allegations that His Royal Highness has uh, mentioned, I can confirm that none of them are true, and I just feel sorry that there is no one who's speaking for the president, so that they are able to directly um, uh, clarify uh, these uh, rumors. But we're not at a point where we should be really entertaining rumors. We should be working with facts. The prince must bring facts to say that this is evidence, one, two, three, eight, eight, BC, forward about what the president has done. This, this was a meeting between the king. He must give us uh, the facts. If there's evidence, then there's something else. Right, we're going to bring in uh, independent legal analyst uh, advocate Sipo Mandula, who also joined us in our previous conversation. Thank you very much for, for joining us, uh, advocate Mandula. Of course, I'm sure you've heard the debate as it's unfolded, but can I also bring your, your perspective in on, I think the, the crux of the, issue, of the issue here is the significance of the Davis judgment and whether, whether in fact, the identification of the king is implicated in the decision not to recognize President Ramaphosa's 
decision or, or, or to review President Ramaphosa's decision. Um, of course, Prince Togozani says paragraph 61 of that judgment effectively means that everything is back in play now. I will also put to Prince Togozani after this, but I, I want to put to you what about paragraph two, which says this is not about who should be the Zulu king. H how do you unpack the judgment for us? Uh, thank you very much, Sizu, and a good evening even to my fellow panelists. Sizu, I think this was a very important judgment, uh, considering that it was looking at the customary law processes. And secondly, Sizu, it was looking at the legislation that governs recognitions of kings and queens in this country. And it is important for us that in reading this judgment, allow uh, both parties to study this judgment thoroughly. And people are allowed in this country to do appeal, to do a review. But what is important that Judge Davis came out very clear, I think, is what you have covered now, that what was the question before the the courts. And those questions were around two things that we know. It was the constitution of the core royal family. And secondly, it was the matter that is very important, the committee that has to be appointed by the president according to the act, rather than the mediation panel. But I think some of us, what we have picked up is this cry and this lamentation of us developing our customary law, respecting our customs, and allowing the, the royal family also to use this opportunity since, since we are in the month of reconciliation. How do we reconcile our views? How do we uh, revive our customs and cultures so that we don't allow what happened in the uh, Eastern Cape with the Pondoland matter? Because we have many problems of recognition of kings and queens post Ntapo Commission report. So if one looks at the courts, they're not only the battle field, but they are there to clarify the interpretation of the traditional Khoisan Leadership Act, which you know very well Cizwe, that it was rendered uh, not valid by the courts. But we still had to use it because Parliament has to remedy, has to refine that process of the traditional Khoisan Act. But I think what is important, Cizwe, is for the royal family to understand that what the what the act have said on the core royal family, what constitute the royal family. And we know on the papers of the court, the issue of the 14th of May came out very clear that it seems that there were some challenges. And secondly, I think what is important, it is the issue of us looking at, there was this focus on the mediation panel that came out of this judgment. The 43 page judgment of the mediation panel also Absolutely. Uh, we'll come back to uh, Advocate Mandula after that. Let's, let's cut to a break. And when we come back, we'll discuss the way forward that has been foreshadowed by Advocate Mandula. Where to from here and can an amicable solution be found? We'll see you after the break. South Africa. on your lips what sort of issues keep you up at night do you feel your own life is no longer in your own hands you need a place to ask for accountability Our job is to give voice to your struggle so that those who can make a difference hear you loud and clear. This nation needs critical thinkers such as yourselves and we will come to you so that you can be heard. This is your place to ask and know. And I'll help you make sense of it all. Reconciliation Day to me was meant for us as a nation, as South Africa, to actually unite. How can we move forward as a united people? Come together, be one. We really need a better push to get to like a nice place of reconciliation.
come together as one and become one nation. This was meant to bring healing and unity to us as a people, so that's what Reconciliation Day means to me. Welcome back to Unfiltered. Tonight we're looking at the Amazulu Royal House in light of a recent judgment which cast doubt, in fact, reviewed and set aside a decision by President Cyril Ramaphosa to recognize the Amazulu King, Amazulu King Misuzulu. Uh, um, I beg your pardon, there's so many uh, different advocates, analysts, um, Prince Togozani, yes. um, although I do know that you have uh, legal expertise as well. Um, the judgment. Yes. I think it's very important for us to understand the judgment. Yes. Um, but can I put to you one thing, which is you talk about paragraph 61, which, which says that uh, the judgment of Matondo about the recognition or the identification of the king doesn't necessarily have to right. be followed. Yes. Um, but Paragraph two of the Davis judgment, the most recent judgment, which set aside President Ramaphosa's um, decision to recognize King Misuzulu, does say this is not about who should be the Zulu king. Absolutely. So how, do you, how do you contend with that? Because he's quite clear that that question is not the subject of his judgment. Rather, it's the question of whether President Ramaphosa's recognition decision was, was re reasonable. Yes, precisely, uh, because that uh, 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 pronouncement uh, by the judge uh, aligns with what we've always said, that it is the royal family that identifies the king. Now, most importantly, uh, Makeb, is that the court, uh, the judgment, states that the matter has to revert back to the investigative committee. In fact, uh, since inception, that is what we've been crying for. And that is the step that President Ramaphosa didn't take that the court uh, actually Def impugned. De definitely. And now, effectively, that will tell, it should tell us that Prince Misozulu is no longer a king of the Zulu nation until such time that the president uh, uh, files a uh, leave to appeal, which doesn't in fact change uh, the judgment, but it simply suspends uh, 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 the operation of, uh, uh, of, 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 of the judgment. Now, it's not true that uh, Prince uh, Mr. Zulu is still a Zulu king. He's no longer a Zulu king. Hence, the matter has been reverted to the investigative committee to do what the president ought to have done from inception. Prince Africa, this investigative committee uh, actually can look at the process of identification as far as I understand the judgment and can decide whether the processes followed to identify King Misuzulu were appropriate. Now it may come back and say, well, they were. They were the correct processes. Uh, but there's a possibility that this investigative uh, process actually looks at the, at the process of identifying King Misuzulu and says that there was something wrong with it. Are you worried about that? Are you still confident, as you were in our first conversation, that that process uh, followed the appropriate customary and, and Zulu law? Again, we are quite, uh, we've always been confident about the processes of uh, our uh, government and we've always had the respect for the rule of law. So, but we don't want to try and guess uh, what is going to happen in the future, but I can tell you now that uh, uh, that judge did not set aside the customer the solo customs that put King Misuzu in place. It just set aside the decision of the president. So it just uh, talk about the processes which they believe that the president maybe did not follow enough on, or, I mean, on this uh, particular situation. So I'm st we, we, we are still very uh, confident. We are still in the same position where we know that uh, 
uh, whatever happens, the king will remain king because the king was not put here by these uh, pieces of uh, judgment where, or, or, or any certification that was brought to him. All these things, they came later. The king was already the king. The king is the king because of the Zulu people. He's the king because of the, the right of birth that he comes from the royal house. He, there is no other son of King Zulitini that is equivalent to him. Perhaps we should understand that, you know, um, uh, more than to try and rely on the uh, on, on guessing on these processes, you know, if ever uh, this in this team will come with that. We don't want to, we don't live in a speculation uh, world where we just gonna speculate about things. We already know a simple fact that we have got the king that's been put by Zulu customs, and we know that the Dutch law has never been very kind towards uh, the installation of the, uh, the Zulu king. From the time of King Kajwaya, from the time of King Tinizu, you know, history has proven to us that we always having issues over time, time and again, whenever we've got to uh, install our king. So it comes with no surprise, all these misunderstandings that we have. And fortunately, we've got a Zulu king that is very patient, that is also understanding these democratic processes. Advocate Mandula, your your thoughts on the interpretations of of this judgment and and what it means in terms of of the recognition decision. I, I think we have to be very clear that uh, this recognition process, as we have said before, it was supposed to follow the spirit and the latter of the traditional Queensland Leadership Act, and secondly, it was supposed to also, like I said, to recognise the uh, role of the core royal family, as I've said earlier. And thirdly, I think since we have to understand we are living in a constitutional democracy. If we are living in a constitutional monarchy, that will have been something. But we are living in a democratic space that allows the uh, courts to intervene when there are challenges. We don't have a traditional leadership courts that has entertained matters of this nature. And I, I, one will agree uh, with Togazani what he said earlier, that the judgment also suspended, I mean, allowed the president to appeal, but it also can, can also allow the royal family to can decide. You can have an option to have the region if there is a vacuum. The law allows that because the, the, the clear process is that this judgment have set a clear history that it is important for the president as the one who recognizes the king and queens, having consulted the premier, having consulted the minister of Cocta. Because remember, Caesar, you have a hierarchy of people when you have to deal with traditional leadership post-apartheid. During apartheid days, it was just imposition of chiefs. Even they were not using kings and queens, they were using derogatory words of undermining our traditional governance. So it is important post-1994, we go deeper to revive our customary laws so that they are aligned to the constitution. We might have chapter 12 that recognizes traditional institution, but also we need to put traditional leadership into test that they have to be accountable to their communities, to be accountable to the nation. And we know very well Sisu, that this judgment was, sub was open to be appealed, and it might end up in the highest court of the land. And that's how the law become exciting for us to start to can develop our own customary law. It is never too late for us to can develop our customary law when we are in a situation of this nature. Mr. Kulu, I believe we have you back. We have a, a minute to go to our next break, but just to, to bring you back in, and we'll, we'll also bring you in in, in the final segment. Uh, your thoughts on, on the conversation about how to really understand what this judgment means? I think you might be on mute, uh, Mr. Tulu. Yeah, the only, what is happening here is that the only legal instrument that makes it possible for Prince Misizulu to be regarded as a king in this country he has to be recognized by the president or he has he has to get recognition by the president but that decision 
is subject to the challenge that it has happened when any party who is affected, for instance, in this matter, the royal family, has laid its complaint before the court, and the court is in agreement with it, examining all the facts that the, when, when, when the recognition took place, the president erred. I know that it, it is not fashionable, it has not been fashionable in this country to have the president found to have committed uh, some error in law or has his decision has been declared to be unlawful. But it has happened. And that's why I was saying the royal family needs to be given a space to perform its customs, to make it sure that the similar mistake does not happen. Now, his announcement, because we have not received any notice, his announcement now that he will be appealing is political, because we don't know what are the grounds, and we have to we have to speculate now. What are the grounds of appealing this judgment? When you look at the meeting of the 14th, which is seems to be uh, the main meeting, what is said by Madondo in his judgment does not correlate with what is in the meeting of that meeting or the minutes of that meeting don't correlate with what Madonna is saying. And we're able to show that in court. People who attended the meeting of the 14th, there were a number of people, even houses that do not exist within the royal family. We know about the case of uh, the vendor case, where the chief, or oh, the king there, was also declared to be invalid because people who attended or who participated in the meeting were not supposed to be there. Purely on those bases, it was set aside. Now, in this case, we've right. got evidence because there are which confirms that these people were not members. So, without the legal instrument, you can't have this king calling himself a king. Without this legal instrument, which makes it to be gazetted. And right now, we're shooting in the blank because we don't know what exactly would be the grounds. And we see it representing the family here. We see it as interference, at least having denied our client the rights when they were complaining. Now he's taking this matter into another, a very expensive process, which is the courts. He has been warned by the panel, even though the panel was not binding, the mediating panel, which was led by uh, Mr. Mtun, Mr. Willis Mtun, they warned him about litigation that was unfolding, and that it is important to respect them to unfold up to a, a stage where there is clarity. I mean, there are a number of issues uh, which remain uh, unclear. For instance, the issue of who is the core royal family core. The panel suggested that that matter alone should be investigated, and it will help other the number of disputes which involves the kings and queens in this country. And there is no concerted effort to address all those issues and the impact on a large number for that matter, on a large number of African people because they reside in these areas. The rule of law needs to be observed, but they are because our kings are responsible for those institutions. Right. But and, there is no effort whatsoever. Indeed. And l l let me... Let me um suggest that we, we move towards final thoughts and conclusions going forward. Um, we've heard various different interpretations of the judgment, what it means and its deeper implications. I think the question for me and, and uh, in the minds of a lot of South Africans is where to from here? Uh, there's been a call in many sectors of our society for some kind of solution to be found, some kind of conversation to be, to be had between uh, the parties. I'll start with you, uh, Prince Togozani. Where do you think we go from here and how can we find a resolution to, to this question which can be good for the Amazulu royal house and the country? Yes, uh, in fact, uh, uh, there is a practical response uh, 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 to the quagmire by uh, uh, our de facto king, uh, Simaga Tegazo that he has 
convened a meeting of the Zulu royal family uh, on Sunday at 10 a.m. at Osut uh, uh, Palace to deal with this matter because we, we can't deal with it in hypothetical terms. But however, I agree with Ukulu uh, Sonkope. Attorney Upanapas. For the president, one, it's all about electioneering, you know, wooing uh, support for his party uh, 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 in the face of the plight of the Zulu uh, royal family. But secondly, it could be possible that he knows that he's not going to, to, to succeed, whether he files a leave to uh, uh, appeal whether he petitions the Supreme Court of Appeal, it could, it's possible that for him and uh, you know, his cohorts, it's a question of buying time so that they complete uh, the transaction right. of running down uh, 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 or, or of plundering the resources uh, right. of, of, of the Zulu Kingdom. Uh, Prince Africa, uh, your concluding thoughts and any responses you want to, to enter, uh, I'm afraid we are running out of time, so I'm just going to give you an opportunity to round off and, and say anything that you've, you've been wanting to say as the discussion has unfolded. Yeah. <clears throat> he just said uh, that uh, uh, to, see, to hear my, my brother, the Prince, uh, Prince Rosani, uh, uh, really talking with a belief that uh, Prince Magadha is the king. I really think that is very important in as much as we are engaging in this discourse over this uh, issue, is that uh, we remember that Prince Magadha remains a prince. His Majesty King Mrs. Zulu is a king chosen by custom and nothing is going to change. And this reference to the meeting on Sunday of the royal family, I want to put it out there to the royal family that that is not the meeting of the royal family. It is the meeting of the faction, as the prince put it, that they are meeting to discuss, and we welcome that they do that because we are a democratic society. And uh, the main challenge here is that, you know, not long ago that uh, we know we know the financial situation of Prince Bonis. He did not have a dime, and then suddenly he woke up and now he's a uh, challenging court. And I was really shocked that he knew the direction of the court, where the courts are, are based. And now we're having a problem that there's people funding, there's a lot of funding that needs to be investigated in this particular issue. And as long as that is not covered, as long as, the, as that is not addressed, we're always going to find the issue of uh, uh, the outside forces right. creating instability in the crowd. Right. Thank you very much, uh, Prince Africa, for joining us. Uh, and, and Advocate Mandula and Mr. Tulu, again, unfortunately, we are running out of time. But just uh, any concluding thoughts from, from your perspectives? I'll start with you, Advocate Mandula. This is, uh, for me, is that uh, let's allow, like we, uh, Barnabas was saying, let's get the grounds of appeal and let's allow the Supreme Court of Appeal to entertain this matter once more. Like I said, the law allows both parties to ventilate uh, but let us also uh, allow uh, and remind our, our royal families and royal house that they have a, a, a mammoth task in the broader continent. They have a bigger role to serve their own communities. And it is important that we restore the dignity of the traditional leadership in this country and also to respect the laws of the country and to promote uh, reconciliation, like I've said, and social cohesion amongst the family so that it can be a good uh, I mean, uh, example to the continent as well as to the country. Mr. Kulu. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think it's important to recognize the right uh, of the royal family. And, and that can only happen once everyone knows, for instance, who is involved in this matter. When we talk about royal family before the identification, who are we talking about? Because it will seem as if uh, when we examine the fact that the people who have played major role in the process of identification towards uh, the recognition were actually people that were not necessarily members of the royal family core, but interlopers. Right. 
So it's very important, and I think the, the investigative uh, unit or, or committee suggested may close that loop when there is a clear cut who exactly is the royal family in this matter. And our clients, in this case, not only Prince Mbonisi, but the other members of the royal family are open to have this meaningful engagement in terms of who exactly is the core right. Right. member of the ruling family. Thank you. Thank you very much to, to our panel this evening. It's, it's really rare and special. We thank uh, Prince Africa and Togo Zani for sharing a, a platform with us tonight. And of course, for our legal analysts and observers, thank you for your insights as well. Thank you very much for joining us once more on Unfiltered. We have delved into the question of the Amazulu Royal House after a recent judgment which set aside President Cyril Ramaphosa's recognition of Amazulu King Nisuzulu. Let's continue the conversation on social media at Unfiltered SABC and have a good night.